Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified. Good morning. morning. Happy Sunday. Um, Before I begin, uh, last week I meant to hand out these cards on uh, proclamations to overcome depression and uh, also some prayer cards, some prayer cards for prayers for protection. So I placed a little on a few of them. There's enough on in the front and the back. So if it's something you're interested, grab it on the way out. Um, They're there for your use. This week's sermon is going to seem a little simplistic to some of you, but to others it's going to be challenging. I'm going to talk about hearing the voice of God this week. And to some people, hearing the voice of God is like a no-brainer. Oh yeah, God speaks to me all the time. To others, it's a struggle. Am I, am I really hearing from Him? Is it me? Is it the enemy? Am I making this up? So we're going to talk about that this morning, how we determine the voice of God, how he speaks to us. There isn't a single person in this room who wouldn't have their life radically changed by hearing the word of God better, by hearing his voice better. The worst marital problem in the world is one world, one word away from total turnaround by hearing God's voice. Sickness and disease, one living word can can heal. A financial crisis, the Lord knows exactly how to turn your situation around. It's just a matter of hearing his voice. And communication is a part of every relationship. Imagine for a moment, you're married, but you never talk to your spouse. Not much of a relationship, is it? Same goes with God. Our relationship with God should be one where we are speaking, he is listening, he is speaking, we are listening. It should be mutual growth, love, exchange. And this is the essence of prayer. I think that's why Paul says to pray without ceasing. Because God wants to be a part of everything that we do. He wants to be a part of every decision we make. He wants us to speak to him and to hear his voice continually through the day. We're to be in constant communication with the Lord. So if you would, open your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 3. This is one of my favorite Bible stories and one that, as a kid, I used to delight in when my mother would read this to me. Imagine, as a kid, I was, you know, God was speaking to Samuel. And that just blew my mind away, that God would speak to someone. We're going to start with verse 1. We're going to look at what we can learn from Samuel's exchange here with the Lord. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. Samuel was in close proximity to the Lord ministering to the Lord, and we can best hear his voice when we are ministering to him in worship. Verse 3, the lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Samuel was near the ark. Now, we know that the ark was more than just symbolic of God's presence. He dwelt between the cherubim. He dwelt on the mercy seat. He was there. So what can we hear from this? What can we pick out from this? We best hear the Lord when we're in His presence. When we're aware of His presence. And we come into His presence primarily through worship. Now skipping down to verse 7. Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. Those who don't know the Lord will not hear his voice. And it also tells us that we need to practice, doesn't it? We need to 
try to tune ourselves in to when he's speaking to us. Verses 9 and 10. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. Notice, the Lord responded to Samuel. But I think he often waits for us to stop and listen. Like Samuel, we don't often recognize when God is speaking to us. Sometimes we simply don't know. Sometimes we don't want to hear what he has to say to us. Right? Is that you, Lord? If it is, make a red car drive by the house right now. We've all done that, haven't we? And we often mistake the voice of God for our own voice or the voice of someone else, don't we? An important thing to remember is that the voice of the Lord often comes to us in our own thoughts. He speaks to us in our minds sometimes. An odd thing is is I had uh, discerned what the Lord wanted me to preach on this week. And I was, uh, it was like a day later, I was listening to Bill Johnson. And Bill Johnson said this very interesting thing. He says, don't ever say that I don't hear God very well. Now that piqued my attention. He says, the speaker has the responsibility to be heard, not the listener. Interesting point, isn't it? If you can't hear me, if I turn my microphone off, It's my responsibility to make sure you can hear me, isn't it? It's not your responsibility, it's mine. Can the same hold true for God? I think if he wants to make a point, yeah. There have been times in my life where I have been sure that he has spoken to me. I've never heard his voice audibly, but you know that you know that you know that God is saying, Jim, you know, you know that you know. Now let's turn our Bibles to John 16. We're going to look at what Jesus says about the voice of God. I'm going to start with verse 13. John 16 is right after John 15. (laughs) And before 17. In verse 13, when the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. So Jesus is saying the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you. He's going to guide you. He's going to show you the truth. How? By speaking to you, by talking to you, by communicating with you. And the wonderful advantage we have over Samuel is that those of us who have received Christ have the Holy Spirit living within us. Samuel didn't have that. And continuing, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. So the Holy Spirit is speaking. Are we listening? And Jesus is saying he'll tell us everything the Father wants us to know. We are his sheep and we hear his voice. And continuing, he will declare to you the things that are to come. It's prophecy. He's going to tell us future events so that we can be positioned where he wants us. Verse 14, he will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Here again, he's he's speaking. The Holy Spirit is speaking. He will tell us of the things of Jesus. One of the things, one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Jesus to us and to glorify Jesus. Verse 15, all that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. In other words, he'll reveal to us the secrets of heaven. If we will listen. If we will listen. Ginny, I forgot to get something for the sermon. Could you run back in my desk and get pens and some um, index cards, please? They're in the drawer on the right, I think the second drawer down. Thank you. 
In John 10, verse 27, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. How many people here are Jesus' sheep? Amen. Amen. Albie? Amen. Thank you. <laughs> and he continues, and I know them, and they follow me. Notice in this verse, he says, his sheep hear his voice. Not they should hear his voice. Thank you. Not no, not can hear his voice, not should hear his voice, but he made the emphatic statement that his sheep do hear his voice. That means he's talking all the time, even when we're buying beans. He's talking. Are we listening? Jesus was not make, saying a parable here. This is a statement of truth. There's no qualifier. Anyone who has received Christ is one of his sheep and hear his voice. So what's he saying? He's saying that he's already popping around in your head and in your heart. He's in there talking to you, giving you dreams and visions and impressions and feelings. He's in there. He's prego. Has it been that long since that commercial was on? <laughs> it's in there. Now, many Christians, of course, would, would question this. Well, that's not been my experience. I struggled with this for years. And it was probably, it was like 10 years ago before I was confident that I was hearing his voice. And I would sit on my bed. I'm listening, Lord. Speak. Speak, your servant is listening. And there would be nothing. Or I'd get a fleeting thought and, ah, that's just me. That's just me. But then I came to realize that his voice sounded just like mine. Why is that? Our spirits are one. What else would he sound like? I mean, I'd like it if he sounded like Charlton Heston with the big booming voice. Wouldn't that be great? Go to Goodwill this morning, Jim. That'd be great, wouldn't it? But he doesn't. His, his touch is lighter than that because he wants us to seek him out. He wants us to be still with him. See, all believers can and do hear the voice of God, but most of us just don't recognize that we are. Radio and television stations, they transmit 24-7, don't they? Remember when we were kids at 11 o'clock, you get that big thing in the middle of the screen that they were off the air and it'd be on all night? It's a new concept for you, isn't it, Adam? Yeah. Really, at 11 o'clock, the radio stations or 12 o'clock, they'd go off the air or the television stations. But now they're on 24-7. But we only hear them when we turn on the radio or the TV and when we're tuned into that station. If we can hear the station, it's not because they're not transmitting. It's because we're not turned on, and we're not tuned in. In the same way, God is constantly transmitting his voice to his sheep. Many Christians have their TVs turned off, or we're turned into the world station. Many Christians are busy pleading with God in prayer to transmit when the problem is with their receivers. That was my problem. He was talking, but I wasn't tuned in. The first thing we need to do is fix our TVs, Believe that God is already speaking and start listening. And that takes time and effort and focus. Some of you have heard of Mark Berkler. Mark uh, does a, a seminar and he, he wrote a book. I believe the book is called Communication with God or Communion with God, something like that. And he struggled with this very thing also. He describes his struggle in the book. And he finally came to the same realization that I did, that God was speaking all the time and that we're just not listening. But he has a particular method, which I think is very helpful. And what he does is he will quiet himself. He will focus on Jesus. He uses a lot of visioning. And then he will, what he calls, tune to flow. 
Basically, he turn, tunes to spontaneous thoughts that flow into his mind. That's the way God communicates. And then he'll write it down. He'll journal. And he'll journal back and forth with the Lord. I do that frequently. It's amazing what the Lord will reveal to you if we'll just listen and trust that it's him speaking. And yes, sometimes we're going to make mistakes. Sometimes it's going to be what Jim thinks instead of what God thinks. But the rewards are fantastic here. Mark says that the most important thing that a pastor can teach his congregation is how to hear the voice of God. That's, if you think about it, that's crucial, isn't it? Because if we're all hearing the voice of God, we're united. If we're all hearing the voice of God, we have direction, we have guidance, we have comfort, we have love. Pretty important. In John 4.24, Jesus says, God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. See, communication with God is basically spirit to spirit. Rarely does he speak to our brain or to our ear. I'm going to clarify what I just said here in a minute. He speaks to us spirit to spirit. He rarely speaks to us audibly. But he speaks to our spirits in thoughts and impressions, which is why we often miss his leading, because we think it's our own thoughts. So what does all this boil down to? Trust that what is being communicated to you is from the Lord, and take a risk. Evaluate it. This is not a situation like, I don't know, there have been several women, I think there was one in North Carolina or something, that said that God spoke to her and told her to kill her four children. No. I mean, we know that's not, that's not God. So when you hear something, evaluate it, and act on it. Is this God? Ask him questions. Lord, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do today? Who do you want me to talk to today? What am I supposed to tell this person? This person hurt me, Lord. What, how do I handle this? He'll answer if we'll listen. If we'll listen. But we'll never know for sure if God is speaking to us unless we're willing to take the risk. Jenny, you have the cards and everything? Thank you. All right. I don't know how we're going to do this, but... Um, pass them out? Yeah, pass out one to everybody, okay. if you would, please. And meanwhile, I'll talk about this guy here. This is Shammy. I'm waiting for Judith to make eye contact. Isn't Shammy cool? Yeah, you're not Shammy. This is Shammy. I know, sweetie. She doesn't. She gets embarrassed. I'm sorry, I'm not You're not chamois. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, chamois is an elephant who struggled to hear from God. He struggled for a long time trying to hear God speaking to him. And finally, he learned how to do it. And chamois is part of our new Sunday school curriculum this year on how to hear God's voice. So in Sunday school this year, we're going to learn how to hear God speaking to you. And Shammy's going to help. It kind of feels kind of cool. like that. Anyway, moving right along. It's been a while since I've been able to play with one of these legitimately. We're going to say a little prayer here. And what I'd like you to do is write down the first thing that pops into your mind, if you would. And then we'll collect these. Please don't sign your name. Make this uh, anonymous. And then what we're going to do is we're going to see what the Lord is saying to us. And I think you'll be amazed that the Lord will speak to us as a church and as individuals. Do you like Shammy Haley? I'm glad you're here this week. You're going to see a lot of chamois in Sunday school this year.
what? Just enough? Oh, that's a God thing. That's not an accident. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you that you speak to your people. Jesus, we thank you that we are your sheep and we hear your voice. And now, Lord, we're asking you to give us a word to speak to us and um, just tell us what you would like someone in the congregation to hear or you would like the congregation to hear. Give us a word, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you would just take a moment and write the first thing that pops into your head, and it can be bizarre. I've had bizarre things told to me that make sense to other people. Okay, everybody got their word? If you don't, that's okay. You have three words? Yeah, that's okay. All right, um, Ginny, would you collect down here? And Bruce, would you collect down these this way, please? If you really like the pens, you can keep them. I love those, those pens from the 70s, you know? Remember, this is completely anonymous. I don't want to, uh, I'm not looking to embarrass anyone, but what I'd like to do is if a word in particular that you hear speaks to you, let us know, okay? There's only a couple people whose handwriting I will recognize. Steve is one of them. You have such unique handwriting, unless you've, Unless you, did you disguise it? You could always write left-handed. Pardon? Yes. I would recognize yours too, I think. Okay, thank you, Bruce. All right. The first word we received was inner peace. And again, if these mean anything to you, if this is something you're struggling for, just raise your hand so we have affirmation that the Lord is really talking to us. Love. That's a good one. Friendship. Kindness. I think the Lord's trying to communicate something to us this morning. I'm here. I like that one. Prayer. Speak, Lord, for I am listening. Thankful. Amen. Peace again. (laughs) Cheese. Is that you, Lois? No? it you, Adam? Adam loves cheese. Okay. Well, that's supposed to speak to someone. Love? Cheese? Well, maybe. Yes. Yes. And God often does that. He loves puns. If we, read, if we knew Hebrew and Greek, we would know, we would see that there are a lot of puns in the Bible. There really are. Quaint. That's you. 23rd Psalm. Hmm. 23rd Psalm. That's a good one. Be still. That's probably to me personally. (laughs) Be patient. (laughs) That's to me personally. He is here. Another one. Same thing. Are you starting to to see that he, he is speaking to us? Humility. God, my king and master, God, control my life. Amen. 
Thank you, Lord, for my healing. You know it was a difficult time for me. Thank you. Amen. Let the meditation in my heart and the words of my mouth be acceptable to you, Lord, my Savior. Psalm 51, I think. Don't judge. Faith is strength. Family, love, and happiness. It's kind of like our placemats, isn't it? What, is, what do they say? Is it... Faith, family, and friends. It's not tomorrow. It's today the Lord wants to work and answer. Very good. Glorify God in all you do. You are loved. Amen. Healing. Jesus, help. It's a prayer we've all said, hasn't it? Thanksgiving. Believe in me, or believe in. Ooh. Take God, me, out to the community. It's a word to the congregation, isn't it? Trust me. Repent. Household fellowship. That's interesting. We've been flirting around with uh, the idea of small groups in uh, vestry. So that's an interesting word. And I think we're back to the beginning, yeah. Well, thank you. I, I hope that you see that the Lord does speak through you and to you, through others. But it does, it takes a little bit of a risk sometimes. And the, it takes um, the willingness to be wrong sometimes. And it takes faith. Faith and risk really are the same word. They mean the same thing. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for speaking to us. We thank you, Lord, that you are a God who communicates with your people. We thank you, Lord, that we are your sheep and we hear your voice. We ask you, Lord, to turn the, turn the volume up for us so that we can better hear what you're speaking to us. We, we want, Lord, to serve you. We want, Lord, to be your ministers. We want better to love you and to bring others to you. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.